Hi, I'm Danielle Defoe, and you're watching Animal Logic. In honor of Halloween, we're going to talk about the five spookiest animals. Let's do this. We've talked about vampire bats before. If you haven't seen that episode, click here to check that out. As you'll see, despite being the source of the Dracula myth, Vampire bats don't even come close to the creepiness that is the vampire finch. The vampire finch, or Geospiza difficilis septentrionalis, is, as the name suggests, a finch, though perhaps without the moral backbone of their eponym, Atticus. They can be found on Wolf Island, which is a part of the Galapagos Islands. Wolf Island is a dry, hot rock where food is scarce. As a result, the vampire finch has to get creative, and that's how they earn their name. Their diet is comprised of seeds, insects, and, especially during times of drought, the blood of other birds. They primarily go after nazcas and boobies. They target the base of the boobies' tail, where their oil glands are located, until they draw blood. Then, they drink it, like the adorable little vampires they are. The weirdest thing about all this is that the boobies don't really try to fend them off. They just sit there, letting the little suckers get their fill. The reason for this is because the vampire finches swarm in astounding numbers, and to fight one off would only see another take its place. Hail Hydra. Their sharp beak is used like a scalpel to extract energy-rich blood, but they aren't always so surgical. They also target eggs, using their feet to roll them off cliffs so they can lap up the delicious yolk. Unlike the vampire bat and vampire squid, whose intentions are often given away simply by their menacing appearance, the vampire finch is so creepy because it just looks like an innocent sharp-beaked ground finch. Meet the goblin shark, or Mitsukurina austenai, the weirdest thing since sliced vampire finches. They have an amazing jaw that can shoot out from their head, so instead of the shark's head moving, the jaw moves to catch the prey. They can be found throughout the world at depths of up to 4,300 feet, or 1,300 meters. Adults usually measure between 10 and 13 feet, or 3 and 4 meters long. The underside of their snout is covered in little electroreceptors, called ampullae of Lorenzini, that are able to pick up the electric fields produced by its prey just like platypuses. Due to limited sightings, little is known about the goblin shark, but scientists estimate that due to its anatomy, it's a slow-swimming shark that may drift towards its prey undetected before unleashing its fast-action jaw in a deadly ambush. But fear not, goblin sharks primarily feed on bottom-dwelling fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans, not humans. Whew. Halloween list wouldn't be complete without a werewolf, but this werewolf is neither man nor wolf, but cat. Meet the Lycoy cat, a new breed of cat that looks like Michael J. Fox and Teen Wolf, minus the letterman jacket and basketball skills. The new breed exploits a gene variation that interferes with hair growth, leaving the kitties with a lack of hair around their face and paws, leading to their werewolf-like appearance. We still don't know what happens to them during a full moon, so you might want to keep your bedroom door locked. Unless they turn into, you know, Taylor Lautner. That guy's a babe. So can we get any creepier than that? Oh yes, we can. Ophiocordyceps, a parasitic fungus, creates zombies out of their ant hosts. It's actually the fungus that inspired the zombie apocalypse in the video game, The Last of Us. Ants pick up the spores of the fungus while foraging, and the spores release a cocktail of behavior-controlling chemicals that hijack the insect's nervous system, forcing the ant to do its bidding. Ants that are infected convulse and appear to be drunk. Their new master now controls their brain, leading the ant to the perfect place for the fungus to grow. How much do they control their zombie, you may ask? All the infected ants walk their fungus-infested bodies up the north side of a plant, onto the underside of a leaf 25 centimeters from the ground, a location with a humidity of 94 to 95 percent, a temperature of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, and then they chomp down on the vein of the leaf in a death grip. All of this is synchronized with remarkable precision, right at noon. Two to three days after the ant locks its jaws on the leaf, the fungal stalk bursts out of the back of its head. 
The fungus reaches maturity, protecting its more vulnerable parts inside of the ant's body. Then, releases its new spores to the ground below, creating a new killing field. Scientists have discovered 160 different types of fungi, each secreting a different combination of chemicals to control their zombie. A death bite mark found on a fossilized leaf is evidence that this has been happening for over 48 million years. And there are other cordyceps that attack moths, grasshoppers, walking sticks, and possibly even one day, humans. Creepy enough for you yet? Just wait. For our next creature, now imagine you're 8,143 meters below the ocean surface in the Mariana Trench, the deepest place on Earth. It is inky black, freezing cold, and decomposing ocean life is falling like snow around you. No living fish has ever been recorded here. And then suddenly, boo! This translucent sea creature floats by and breaks the record for the deepest fish ever found. You would probably be spooked if it wasn't for the fact that at that depth, your head would have imploded. Imagine 1,600 elephants standing on the roof of a small car. That's your head. Over 11,000 PSI, or 750 times the levels of pressure that we feel here on the surface of the Earth. The sea ghost, as it has been dubbed, is believed to be a completely new variety of sea creature. Well, still a fish. It is able to survive the incredible pressures because it has increased levels of a special chemical in its body called trimethylamine anoxide, which keeps the cell walls of fish and amphipods flexible so they don't get crushed. It's also the chemical that gives fish their fishy smell, which is also pretty scary sometimes. So, as always, what animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Stay spooky.